السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته uh, الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله so إن شاء الله everyone as we know we are on the topic of um, you know الفتن والبلايا والمحن والرزايا والفوائد البلوى والمحن so we're on the topic of الفتن والبلايا trials and tribulations and you know how we can all you know benefit from from trials and tribulations so we went through the first point that Imam Al-Izz, right? We're doing the Kitab of Al-Izz, Abu Muhammad, uh, Abdul Aziz ibn Abdul Salam, uh, ibn Abi Qasim, Al-Sulami, Al-Shafi'i. So subhanAllah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the benefit. And subhanAllah, we can see when the dua is made, Nafa Allahu bihi al-Muslimin, in this book, the dua is made. Till now, you know, almost, you know, you know, a thousand, eight hundred, you know, years, nine hundred to a thousand years that we, you know, later on, people are still taking a lot of benefit from this book, right? So that's one benefit at least from the before Aidul Balwa will, you know, and 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 Balaya and the calamities. That's one benefit of it. Um, so number one, Ma'rifa to we did number one, Ma'rifa to. To know that Allah, the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's really the, the beginning of it, right? That's the first part of this whole, you know, thing when it comes to, um, you know, people and, you know, going through these difficulties. Number two, right? Let's do the second one now. Ma'rifatu dhillatil ubudiyati wa kasriha. وَإِلَيْهِ إِشَارَةُ بِقَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ اعترفوا بأنهم ملكه وعبيده وأنهم راجعون إلى حكمه وتدبيره وقضائه وتقديره لا مفر لهم منه ولا محيد لهم عنه so subhanallah, to know number one, ma'rifatu dhillati ibubi, that we are, you and me, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To know how fragile we are, how sensitive we are. Because we really are sensitive, we're fragile, you know, we're, you know, there's not much you can get out of us. There's like, you know what, you know, it, it's the fact that we're so weak, you know, two people get this cure for the same thing. You know, we've seen that, you know, la samahallah. You know, may Allah forgive us and la qadr Allah, may Allah not make it that it happens to anyone. But we've seen it so many times, especially in the current situation, that people are even looking for the blood plasma of individuals who, subhanAllah, the blood plasma of individuals who have cured themselves, their, their body has developed immunity with COVID-19. What's that a sign of? It's a sign that we still don't know why these people got cured and the other ones didn't. Yeah, we say there's pre-existing conditions and when, but there was a lot of people, especially older people, and, and it's, the research is all, it's still, this is still very fresh, right? The research is still coming out. There's a lot of people who are still very much, right? Very, very much, right? And fragile in terms of their health, but they're, they're getting better, right? They're fragile in terms of their health, but they're still getting better, right? So subhanAllah, we see that this situation of, 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 um, you know, of, of the COVID-19 has reminded us that we're weak. We don't know why. We don't even know what, what's happening. Let me tell you something. You know, I studied anatomy. Even the processes, the, 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 you know, the neurological processes and the nerves, how the nerves work in terms of swallowing, actions like swallowing. How do we swallow? There's so much nerves and so much muscles that are happening at the same time. That, you know, physiologists and, and, and anatomists, right? Physiologists and anatomists are still asking themselves the question, how does this really all come together? What was the reaction that really led to it? Right? So, ma'rifatu dhillati, Imam al-Izz ibn Abdul Salam is saying, ma'rifatu dhillati al-ubudiyati, to know how weak we are. Wa kasriha, well, one person gets cured, the other one doesn't. That's why they're looking for the blood plasma of the people that got cured. That both received the same cure. Both of them received the same treatment. Ventilators, this, that. But one, and they were relative, and there's a lot of people like that. And may Allah, you know, really save everyone from this thing. But, you know, because it's, you know, it's, it's a disaster. You know, it's a disaster. 
And it's really great to see that our frontline workers, you know, our doctors, our, our nurses and all of them, mashallah, they've done so much, you know, to help the people. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really accept the good that they're doing. It's, it's amazing, you know. But just from the st- st- spiritual aspect that one person gets cured, someone else doesn't. Right? Two people have the same condition, you know, both of them have the same type of cancer. They go through the same thing. They go through the same chemotherapy, the same radiotherapy. They go through, you know, all, all the same, whatever therapies that they're going through, whatever they choose to go through, whatever it's, you know, it's, it's, it's whatever it is that they go through. And one comes out, well, one survives 10 years, one survives 15 years, one survives, you know, 20 years, and the other one only survived maybe six months, three months. Well, who decided that? They both had similar health. Sometimes people, young people, you know, wallah, it makes you, makes your heart ache. You know, it makes your heart ache. You know, I remember I was at, you know, uh, the, the burial of my, of my grandmother, rahimahullah, just two years ago, two, three years ago. Uh, and may Allah give her the highest ranks in Akhirah. And, you know, subhanAllah, she, she said something, you know, she, she, she was, mashallah, she was very special to me, subhanAllah. And she always used to say, I hope you go to my grave and you, you will bury me and you will read the Quran for me, inshallah. Um, and subhanAllah, that happened. And, you know, so when we were burying her, I said, I, I gave a talk, you know, by the grave. And Allah blessed this person, you know, myself to, to give this talk at her, gra- at her grave and after her burial. And I said to the people there, I said, we don't know who's going to be the first person to pass away. And in my mind, it's like the eldest, the older people that are there. That's in my, the older people that are there. Right? Yet we find... Subhanallah, that from that gathering, you know, within three months, the very first person, from the person, from the burial, the people who attended the burial, the very first person to pass away was one of the youngest people that were there. We're weak, man. We don't know what's, what's, and we don't know. We don't know, like. So, ma'rifatu dhillati al-ubudiyati wa kasriha. It's, it's the dhilla. It's just, we, we're weak. We don't know, like, you know, you, my, you know, and my parents tell me this, you know, like in summertime, I'm the first one to turn on the aircon. In winter, I'm the first one to turn on the heater. They're like, what's wrong with you? You need to get yourself checked up. Like, you, you can't take the heat, you can't take the cold. Yes, I can't take the heat and I can't take the cold and I can't take it being perfect. <laughs> That's how we are. We're weak. Allah Akbar. You know, we're... We're just like that. That's how our insan is. That's how, that's how we are, subhanAllah. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made us, is that, you know, إِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ You know, إِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعَ وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ جَزُوعَ That's the nature of men. You know, that's the nature of mankind, right? Man, woman, child, all of us are the same when it comes to this. That, you know, if something good comes to us, we're covetous. You know, and something bad comes to us, we don't, we don't want to, you know, we, 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 we don't want it. It's like, it's not, it wasn't me. It's like, how come this happened to me? And why me? And why me? And we ask a lot of these questions. Why me? But with something good, we never ask why me. <laughs> We're just like, yeah, it's all mine. That's it. Yeah, it's mine. Yeah, I was, yeah. Hey, I was, all the time it was me that, you know, I, ah, well, you know, I worked hard. You know, I worked hard. It was me. You know, I worked hard. Allah knows best. Wallahi. Allah knows best. You know, who worked hard, who didn't work hard. That's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, that's all in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So coming back to this point that, you know, we really have very few time in, we really have a very short time in this world to wake us up. And that's why, you know, here in this, you know, uh, Shaykh is saying over here, This is how we, this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that in the end we're just saying, we tried our best. <laughs> We tried our best. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Allah decided. You know, you, you try your best. You try your best to avoid the situation. The situation happens. Like, you know, you don't want to tell this person. You don't want to, you don't want someone. For example, you have a friend that's, you know, you, you don't want them to know that, you know, the, what they did was wrong, right? And you're trying your best for everyone not to tell them. But, you know, like the old person will come out and think, man, what are you wearing today? <laughs> you kind of... You're like, oh my God, you told everyone, okay, look, he's going to be wearing this or this person's going to be wearing this. Don't tell them. Don't, you know, everyone just keep quiet. Everyone, you know, just do this. And then what happens? Someone comes and someone says the same thing, right? Someone says the exact same thing. And then you're like, oh my God. You know, you tried your best to stop the situation. Then you say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. We are Allah's and we are to be here with you. And there's beauty in that. There's solace in that. Saying, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. There is solace in that. Right? And that's why I, I personally find it, 
you know, that subhanAllah, spirituality is it's probably one of the greatest things to make balance of everything that is happening around you and to truly accept, you know, the true qut, the true will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why i'tarafu bi annahu mulku wa abidu, that we are Allah's. We are no one else's. We are Allah's. Allah created us and Allah will do with us as He wishes. Finished, full stop. Our duty is to cry. Our duty is to make dua. Our duty is to ask Allah. But that's it. That's where it stops. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the decisions and we have to be happy with the decisions of Allah. We have to be happy with the decision of Allah. Subhanallah, something very interesting. I'll tell you something very interesting. That um, the Arabs, they used to have qualities before the time of Islam. So they say that khamsun qabla khams, that we had five qualities before the time of Islam. So Al-Qam, 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 he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to him that, you know, we, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, who has these qualities and these qualities? He said, we also had these qualities before the time of Islam. And what was one of them? Al-Rada bimurri qada. To have pleasure in the most bitterest of the, of the, uh, of, of, of the, uh, subhanallah, of the, uh, to have pleasure in the most bitterest of the uh, of, of the decisions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So no matter what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides, to be happy with that. To be happy with that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided this, that's it. Alhamdulillah. If Allah decided it, Allah knows the best for me. Allah loves me and Allah knows the best what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for me. And so when we have that type of subhanallah, that type of attitude, that we say, okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the best for me, Allahu Akbar. Yani Allah knows the best for me. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who will do his, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will, you know, will, will, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that decided because he created me, Allahu Akbar. So, وَأَنَّهُمْ رَاجِعُونَ إِلَىٰ حُكْمِهِ وَتَدْبِيرِهِ Anyway, we try our best to stop whatever's happening. But in the end, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants is going to happen. And so this is a wake up call for all of us. That it is all in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَقَضَائِهِ وَتَقْدِيرِهِ What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said a limit and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put there. Now for example, we tell that to people who are behind bars. We say that, look, you chose the wrong way of getting your wealth. You chose the wrong way of solving the situation. Okay, people say that we had no choice, we had to go and steal, we had to do this, we had to do that. No one's forced to do anything. You chose it like that. You could have gone th- through the hard work of you know, earning things that the, the proper way, the legal way, the halal way. But you went and did it the haram way. So because you went and did it the haram way, now you suffer those consequences. Instead of suffering the consequences of hard work, yeah, you get to be tired, you know, you have to have a bit of sabr, right? You have to have a bit of patience, you know, you have to, all of these things, that's part of hard work, right? There is no running away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is no way out except for the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts before you. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put before you, that's the only way you're going to get. If Allah has closed the door, there is no one that is going to open it. And if Allah has opened the door for you, there is no one else that is going to close it. Like subhanallah, like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he told Abdullah ibn Abbas, he told Abdullah ibn Abbas, he told his brother, Fadl ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and he told him, and he said, Subhanallah, Kuntu ridfan Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What an honor. Guys, just imagine this. You know, when we get to travel with someone like Faber, like I was at a conference once, and one of the lecturers, you know, uh, you know, it was, it was a con- conference. I was in Florida, and I was there for a medical conference. And, you know, one of the lectures at the medical conference, he, at five o'clock, I'm going to the airport, right? To, you know, the airport in, you know, Orlando at five o'clock in the morning, right? I'm leaving the hotel. And, and this guy was there and I'm like, man, it's, it's him in the flesh, you know? And I'm like, Allahu Akbar, you know? <laughs> I told him, yeah, yeah. And he's outside and he's looking for a ride. And he was just about, he was signaling a taxi. I said, what signal taxi? You come with me in my Uber. You come with me in my Uber. Come with me, you know? And you know, so he was, and I got the whole way. I got to ask him questions that I was like, I forgot to ask any other lecturer after the thing. And you know, I was like, I was like on the, on top of the moon. But just imagine now. Okay. Just imagine. You get to ride with the Prophet ﷺ. You get to ride with the Prophet ﷺ. Yani, 
Allahu Akbar. You know, inshallah, may Allah give us all the chance that on the Day of Judgment we all drink from the Hawdi Kawthar. Every one of us, inshallah, say Ameen. To the people who are alive now and the people that will listen to this later on, say Ameen that every single one of us, all of us, we, want, we don't want anyone to miss out. We want everyone to get the opportunity and inshallah ta'ala to drink from the Hawdi Kawthar and for the beloved hands, for the brother of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. All of us, inshallah ta'ala, get the chance to drink from, from that Hawdi Kawthar. So subhanallah, you know, so he was behind the Prophet ﷺ, Fadl bin Abbas. And the Prophet ﷺ said, قَالَ يَا غُلَامْ وَيَا غُلَيْمْ إِحْفَذِ اللَّهَ يَحْفَذْكَ إِحْفَذِ اللَّهَ يَحْفَذْكَ Protect Allah, Allah will protect you. فَإِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ وَإِذَا اسْتَعَنْتَ فَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ That all oh my, understand this. My young son, that, you know, subhanallah, understand this, that no one understand this, that if anyone, if you ask anyone, فَإِذَا سَأَلْتَ فَاسْأَلِ اللَّهِ وَعْلَمْ And he said, no one understand, that if everyone was to gather to want good for you, they cannot do any good for you, except what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written. And they cannot harm you, Except with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written. That is the gift of the one who trusts in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the gift of the one who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we all need to come upon that. Every single one of us. We need to bring that understanding that it is in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's hands. And it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that truly decides what happens. The third benefit is ikhlas lillah. That's how you get sincerity. You know how you get sincerity? You know, sincerity is, it's like refined steel. You know, a heart that has sincerity is like a heart that has refined steel. And to refine the steel, you need to put it into the furnace. It needs to be put into the furnace. So in our lives, there are many times that we get put into the furnace. There are many times that we get put into the furnace. And that is an opportunity for us to clean all the, all the intentions. And to do, uh, because we were in Idla Marja, he says, Imam Abd, uh, uh, Abdul Aziz and Abdul Salam, Rahimullah, he says over here, Idla Marja fi daf'i shada'idi illa ilayhi wa la mu'tamada fi kashfiha illa alayhi wa in yamsaska Allahu kama qala Allahu ta'ala. وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْقَ اللَّهُ بِدُرٍ فَلَا كَاشِفَ لَهُ إِلَّا هُ فَإِذَا رَكِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ دَعُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ So al-ikhlas lillahi ta'ala To understand that it is no one, subhanallah If there is one thing, and I know it's going to become, guys, it's whether we like it or not you know, this pandemic, this, this situation that we're in, it's going to be the standard of, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's going to be like a, you know, a situation in our lives where it's going to be like before COVID or after? Was that because before COVID? Were you born before COVID? Were you born before? Uh, man, the guys that were born, before, born after COVID, they're just not like the guys that were born. You know, it's going to be like that. It's, you know, so it's going to be in and of itself. It's like a, it, it, it is a, it is a time. It's a, it's 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 a you know it's it's part of our history now, right? It's a it's like a landmark of our history, right? It's it's part of us now. So, if there's one thing we learn from this pandemic, لا مرجع في دفع الشدائد إلا إليه. There is no one, right, that can lift the shadaid, the difficulties, except Allah. No one wants the economy to go down. No one wants people to lose jobs. We don't want that. No one wants, you know, uh, healthcare workers to be at risk, you know, from any viruses. But we have no choice. You know, the healthcare workers are our front line. They're the guys who know what to do. We have no choice. There is no way but shutting down everything and staying, you know, in social distancing. You know, everyone wants the situation to come back. Like, for example, Ramadan now. We all want to go to the masjid and make taraweeh, but we can't. And we know we can't. Right? We're not meant to. Right? We have to follow the advice. Right, we have to follow the advice. So, la marja, and there is no one that can ever lift that situation. Daf al shadaidi illa ilay. 
It's a reminder from Allah that, you know, with all our technology, all our know-how, all our, you know, our wealth, such wealth, immense wealth in this time and age, you know, we, we have, you know, such wealth amongst us, you know, we've got like people who, who, who are walking around, you know, we've got like such wealth, you know, billionaires, two and a half thousand in the world, imagine, you know, two and a half thousand billionaires in the world, you know, وَلَا مُعْتَمَدَ فِي كَشْفِهَا إِلَّا عَلَيْهِ and there is no one that you can rely on except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no one that you can rely on except Allah. It's only Allah that's going to lift the situation. The cure comes from Allah. Right? How many times the scientists were looking for something, they found something else. I know one of these oil producing OPEC countries, you know, they, one of the documentaries they were saying, the, 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 the people from the country and one of the... The people in the current government were saying that every time that they go and they look for water, they find oil. And every time they go and they look for oil, they find water. It's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling them, no, it's only Allah. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is going to give you this opportunity to, you know, um, you know, to, to, it's only Allah that gives it, opens it up. And how many times scientists will tell you, you know, we were looking for something, we found something else. I was thinking about this, but in the path to looking for that, I found something else. And even a mufti will tell you, while looking for one fatwa, you find something else. You know, while looking for one fatwa, you're going looking and you're looking and looking and say, oh, you find, oh, there's another fatwa here that, that, that was very useful to, for me. You know, you find things, by the way, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, تَوْفِقْ إِلَهِ وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ And like he brings the, uh, the ayah over here, وَإِنْ يَمْسَسْكَ اللَّهُ بِدُرٍ and if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala afflicts you with a difficulty, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you such a situation, You know, some people they say, Man, when is this situation going to end? <laughs> there is no one. And we go and we tell our friends, and no one's saying, I'm not saying in any way or form that we cannot speak to get things off our chest. What I am saying though is the very first first resort is to get is to speak towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make dua and we're gonna get there as well. Right? Which is the next point, the fourth point. <coughs> which is the point of inaba. Okay? The point of inaba. So wa inyam saskallahu bidurrin fala kashi falahu illahu. If you get afflicted with a difficulty it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is going to lift that difficulty. Who's the one that really brings cure? I mean, in the end of the day, we take antibiotics, we take this, we take that. But who's the one that decides that, you know, because in the end of the day, you know, like even supplements, you know, people say, okay, but you take too much antibiotics and you take more supplements, more vitamins. But in the end of the day, the vitamins are dependent on, they also dependent on, it's not the vitamin, it's not the supplement, it's not the drug, it's not nothing. It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that brings the cure. Because even when you take your vitamins, you take your vitamin C, and you take your vitamin Ds, and you take this, this and that, and you know, say, oh, I'm going to be strong and build my immunity. In the end of the day, the body's absorbed, it all depends, you can take it, it comes straight out. Because it all depends on your absorption, your gut, because your gut's got to absorb it. Then people say, no, I've got to take probiotics. You know, because if I take probiotics, and I take, um, you know, I take, um, you know, enzymes, then it increases my absorption rate, yeah. But then you've got to make sure that that probiotic that you're taking, when it was initially created, they put millions or whatever. It's quite a lot. Huh? It's like some of those probiotics have about 150 to 250 million, right? Living creatures inside those. It's like one pill has got like a lot. But then, are they still living? <laughs> because the bacteria don't live at the right temperature. So you take that when it was made. So you take that. So at the end of the day, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that helps. You know, we, we do, it doesn't mean that we don't take the dawa, guys. It doesn't mean that we, we have to take the dawa. Right? Because the dawa, taking dawa is sunnah. Taking dawa is sunnah. The Prophet ﷺ also took dawa. And that is why we, t- we take dawa because it's sunnah. It's preservation of life. Maqasid of the deen. One of the maqasid of deen is the preservation of life. And that is why tadawi bil haram as well. You can even take dawa with haram means. You know, alcohol or whatever it is. Because of the fact that the preservation of life is above everything. Even if you were starving, but you only had, for example, stuff that were impermissible for someone to drink and eat. 
they were the only things that were, I don't know why. <laughs> Someone gonna ask the question, wasn't there a Coles next door? <laughs> <laughs> why was what was the only thing that it was available was a, but there are cer certain circumstances imagine you're somewhere you're in a caravan and the only thing you're the only one that is there that's a muslim and then you know there was a caravan and the only thing they had left was haram food and you were like starving and you all got stuck somewhere and you know this happened and the situation can happen that's why the rules are there in the sharia that the preservation of life is above everything if there is a situation, there is difficulty, it is only Allah that is going to lift it. But how do we lift that difficulty is very important, brothers. Brothers and sisters, it is very, very important that we know how to lift that difficulty. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ The one who relies upon Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is enough for them. وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلَّهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُ وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلَّهُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ يُسْرًا The person that, Allah, that has taqwa, first, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلَّهُ مَخْرَجًا Allah will open up the way for you. So if you want to open up the, the, the way, do like Yusuf alayhi salam did. In the story of Yusuf, Imagine he was a kid. Well, you know, I read that story again today. Every time I read that story, it's just so touching. Imagine he's a kid. There was, you know, the, 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 the tafsir say he was a child. He was on their shoulder. Right? He was on his brother's shoulders. Oh, wow. But it's just, it can almost bring tears to your heart, you know, to, to your eyes. And just break your heart, subhanAllah. He was a child. He was on the shoulders. And they, they threw him down. And when they threw him down, and you know, and then he was trying to check, run after them and chase them, and then each of them was cold, and he was just a child. You know, Allahu Akbar. But he went through all of that. You know, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa says, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى In that surah, you find the ayah, قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلِي أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ أَنَا وَمَنِ تَبَعَنِي That say, this is my path. You know, and I call towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala basira with basira, with, with, you know, with, with, with foresight and those who follow me, myself and those who follow me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it such, you know, ana wa mani taba'ani wa subhanallahi wa ma'ana munil mushikeen. And glory be towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> Allah